Hello and welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling College Fair. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Jenny and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. However, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. This presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. That's strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. I'd now like to turn it over to our first school, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. Hello everyone, my name is Kurt Estrez. I'm the admissions counselor for the Nevada area for Embry-Riddle. I'm also a graduate from the university with a, a background in aviation myself. Um, Embry-Riddle itself is uh, well known for our aviation program, but we also have um, a broad variety of other degree programs we offer. Um, just to give you a little background on our university itself, we have two campuses. We have our Florida, our Arizona campuses, or our residential, and we also have our worldwide or our online programs. Um, just to kind of go over some fast facts about our university, um, we have the top aerospace engineering program in the country uh, and have had that ranking for over uh, 16 years now by US, at, uh, US and News World Reports. Um, but it's not our only engineering program. We do have mechanical, electrical, computer, software engineering. Um, we also have the first and only College of Security and Intelligence in the nation. Uh, this is kind of a program for students that are possibly interested in doing uh, degree programs in security intel like uh, FBI, CIA, NSA, military intel type degree programs. Um, we also have the first and only aerospace physiology program and that program is uh, kind of tailored to what's going on in the space uh, side of things with uh, more of the private and, um, and even uh, government uh, space travel happening. Uh, there's a lot of uh, research and need for the physiological effects on the human body. So this is a uh, pre-med program, but it also has opportunities to kind of go into the space realm of things and learning about the effects of space on the body. We are a better accredited institution. institution. Um, we also have a high ROI for our students or return on investment. We're one of the top uh, 64 schools for million dollar return on investment uh, for our students after they graduate. Um, we also have the top uh, ranked incoming and exiting classes for co colleges in both uh, Arizona and Florida. So we do really pride ourselves on that. Um, just a little bit of information about our two campuses. Uh, we have our Daytona Beach campus and our Arizona campus for our two residentials. Embry-Riddle itself is, uh, may be a little bit confusing with those two locations, but it is the same university. So when a student applies, they only need to apply to one. When they're accepted, they're accepted to both. Our Florida campus is a little bit larger with about 7,000 students. Our Arizona campus is a little bit smaller, about 3,000. But if you can see on the slide there, our average class sizes don't vary too much. Um, <clears throat> the largest class lecture halls you'll see at both campuses is no more than 50 to 60 students. We don't have anything larger than that for um, our lecture halls. Uh, on average, uh, for your underclass courses, underclassmen courses, you'll see about 25, 30 students in your classroom. And then um, as you get to more of your upper level courses, uh, more uh, of your core curriculum, uh, you can see as little sometimes as 10 to 15 students. So it's very one-on-one -on -one and very personal with your uh, professors. A lot of your professors too bring in uh, that industry experience that they've worked in those industries you may possibly be interested in uh, into the classroom as well too. Um, our two campuses have two different levels of collegiate sports offered. Our uh, Florida campus is NCAA Division II sports and our Arizona campus offers NAIA sports, uh, 10 different intercollegiate ones. Uh, as for uh, our uh, ROTC programs, we have all three offered between the two campuses. Um, Army and Air Force are offered at both campuses, as well as Navy ROTC is only offered at our Florida campus. Um, we are second to the Air Force Academy in putting rated pilots in the military. So we, are, uh, we do have a lot of students interested in pursuing uh, uh, military aviation careers as well too. Just to kind of go over some um, fast facts about our university itself <clears throat> for outcomes, 94% of our students um, are, uh, are in their chosen career fields within a year of graduation from our school. So we're really proud of that statistic with our students, and that's across the board for all our campuses. Uh, we have a lot that helps with our career services. Um, and then we also have a lot of ties with our alumni network. So 
Uh, we have uh, over 137,000 uh, alumni that we utilize uh, to help our students find job placement. It's not always what you know, but who you know, and we definitely utilize our alumni for that. We highly encourage our uh, students to uh, be involved in internships, co-ops, um, and different types of uh, opportunities on campus to be involved with the careers they're possibly interested in too. And it really helps out with those job placement rates. Just a little information on our application process. We have an online application. Um, like I said, you only need to apply to one campus, but when you are accepted uh, to one, you are accepted to both. What we require are your transcripts and letters of recommendation. After that, we are a test optional school, so we don't require your SAT or ACT, um, and you're still fully eligible for scholarships if you don't submit your test scores. Uh, we also have essay and resume as an optional item, but still highly recommended. This gives us a better perspective as you as a student. <coughs> Oops, kind of clicked out of that. Um, for financial aid, just to kind of go over that, about 90% of our students receive some sort of financial aid from the institution. Uh, you're automatically considered for merit-based scholarships once you've been accepted. Uh, we also are part of the FAFSA program, so we do have need-based scholarships through the FAFSA. Uh, we also have uh, collegiate scholarship opportunities, ROTC scholarship opportunities, and we accept any uh, outside uh, scholarships, uh, and we'll stack those with ours. So thank you very much for listening today. I will definitely put my contact information in the chat so you are able to reach out to me for more questions afterwards if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you. And a reminder to all of our participants that you can use the Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here at any time. Up next is Boise State University. Hello everyone, my name is Kat Everard and I'm Senior Regional Admissions Counselor at Boise State, located in beautiful Boise, Idaho. Um, Boise State is the largest public research institution in the state of Idaho with about 26,000 students and 17,000 undergrads. Despite being a large school, um, we have about 31 students per class, 17 to one faculty ratio, and we're proud to say over 90% of our students are getting jobs directly in their major right after college. Um, Boise State also holds two of the largest career fairs in the Northwest. Uh, academically speaking, we have over 200 majors and minors to choose from. We're known for material science engineering, holding one of the biggest tech companies in the area called Micron Technology, who is the leader in memory and information technology. About 95% of our computer science grads have jobs before graduation. Uh, we have a regionally ranked education program and we recently became one of the top 50 schools in the country for innovation. A couple years ago, a Harvard business professor actually started our College of Innovation and Design at Boise State with our signature program being our gaming, interactive media and mobile technology degree. Um, at Boise State, you'll see the on the screen, um, these tend to be our top and most popular majors that freshmen declare on their application. Um, however, you'll see that number two most popular was actually undeclared. Um, so we are fully equipped with resources and faculty to help our students explore your major and build towards your future career. Boise State is not impacted and you can graduate in four years. Um, we have a finish in four guarantee that says as long as you do your part in the classroom, um, and yes, you do have to show up and pass your classes, then we'll make sure that our classes are available to you. Um, and if you go more than four years, Boise State will pick up the tab and pay for any additional credits beyond four years. One of our more uh, unique programs at Boise State is our 3D program where you get to customize your degree um, and combine three different academic disciplines. Um, we also have this brand new building on our campus. It's our honors college in a brand new resident hall um, that houses our students based off of the Harry Potter house model. So maybe you'll join our traditional fraternity and sorority system, or maybe you'll join one of our um, honors college houses. Uh, in 2018, we added this $40 million uh, facility to our campus, which um, is really nice, has full-size beds and memory foam mattresses for our students to join. Um, and then most recently, we also added a new visual and performing arts center um, at Boise State. Uh, and I can't forget, of course, we're also known for our famous blue Smurf Turf football field. Fun fact of the day, Boise State actually owns the copyright, copyright or patent uh, to any non-green playing field. So, um, even high schools, colleges, and universities, they have to get permission from Boise State Athletics if they want to dye their field a color that's not green. Um, but now why students are choosing Boise State, I think has everything to do with our amazing capital city, outdoorsy location, and the people. Um, Boise State has been named one of the fastest growing cities in the country. In 2018, we were actually voted number one. We have a little over 700,000 people that live in the Boise metro area now, but you still get that warm, welcoming small town college feel. Our students like to call Boise Idaho, for a reason. 
Um, this is a picture of our campus in downtown area in the winter. Boise, Idaho gets about 18 inches of snow per year. We're a Gold Star Bike Friendly Campus. Students love that the airport is 10 minutes away from the school. You can see walking and biking distance to downtown, food, entertainment, and all of your internships. Um, there's no couch potatoes here. We've been named one of the most active cities in the West, so you get plenty of outdoor activity and a bunch of seasons. Um, we also have 150 miles of hiking and biking, less than 45 minutes away from the closest ski resort. You can get ski lift passes for under 200 bucks for the whole entire season. Um, we have a big outdoors program. Students can rent outdoor equipment, kayaks, camping gear, tents, paddle boards, all at affordable prices. You can even take kinesiology activity courses if you want to get credit and maybe take a snowboarding class, a military fitness class. As an alumni of Boise State, two of my favorite traditions are um, our first week float, where hundreds of college kids will float this lazy river right next to campus, and our short stack shindig, where our alumni literally make blue and orange pancakes for our students on the first day of school. Now, let's talk admissions. Um, in order to apply to Boise State, letters of recommendation and essays are not required for our application unless you plan to apply to the honors program. For fall of 2022, Boise State is test free for admission, so we will only be looking at a student's total unweighted GPA, um, unless you're a homeschool student, in which case we would need uh, an SAT or ACT. For non-resident students, we do have um, three different scholarships that you may be considered for based off of your GPA, starting at a 3.2. Uh, most famously, Boise State is known for being a wooey school. Um, at Boise State, there are specific majors that are eligible in order to receive a scholarship, and you do have to meet our GPA requirements and um, non-resident scholarship deadline. So if you are a senior in the room, I encourage students to apply early. Our application is open now, and our deadline is December 15th. Um, you can save anywhere from two to $15,000 per year, um, depending on where your GPA is. Um, this is my contact info. Let me know if you are interested in applying to Boise State or if you have any questions. Um, and I would love to help. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Up next, we have the University of Idaho. All right, let's uh, get started here. Sometimes I can get that to play. There we go. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Jermaine Rucker, the Assistant Director of Admissions with the University of Idaho. I am actually uh, a regional rep located in Sacramento, California. Um, I, I recruit mainly throughout, uh, usually uh, Northern California and Northern Nevada, but right now we don't have a SoCal rep. So I'm doing the entire state of California and the entire state of Nevada. So. Be sure to take down my contact information and reach out to me if you have any questions about the Vandals. Uh, the University of Idaho is a public land grant university which was founded back in 1889 uh, in the state of Idaho. And, and one cool fact is that we were actually founded one year before the state of Idaho became a state. So uh, keep that in mind. Yes, we've been around for a long time. Uh, Moscow, Idaho is about seven hours north of Boise and about an hour and a half south of Coeur d'Alene. Uh, those are two very popular cities right now with um, Californians that are moving out of state. So uh, maybe you want to check with your parents to see if they're thinking about that move. Uh, and not only, uh, you know, that's where we're located in regards to uh, cities within the state of Idaho, but we're also right across the street, about eight miles apart from Washington State University. And so we don't only share a border, but we also share a couple of programs with that university. So pretty cool. Uh, the uh, town of Moscow is about 25,000 people. It's a rural area uh, surrounded by beautiful rolling hills in an area called the Palouse. Um, our, our campus itself has about 9,000 total students on our main Moscow campus. So you're definitely not going to be entering a large university. Even though we're public, we're, we're considered a small to medium university. Um, our average class size is about 24 students. Uh, we have students that are coming from all 50 states and 73 different countries. So we are improving our diversity every year at the U of I. Um, and matter of fact, we even offer a study abroad opportunities in over 70 different countries that you can choose from. Uh, the U of I is uh, made up of eight different colleges and those, uh, such as our College of Engineering, our College of Science, our College of Business and Economics, just to name a few. We have 96 majors that students can choose from. Um, we are considered 
uh, Idaho's premier research university. And, and that's because we receive more money than any other university in the state of Idaho when it comes to research. So much so that 70% of our undergraduates are performing research. Yes, I said 70% of our undergrads that are working on bachelor's degrees are performing research at the U of I. So if you're looking to get your hands dirty, uh, consider a school like the U of I. Matter of fact, our College of Engineering was ranked seventh by the National Academy of Engineering for infusing real world experiences into its curriculum. Uh, some of our most popular majors at our school is gonna be biology, mechanical engineering, agriculture, wildlife sciences, business, psychology, uh, architecture, uh, journalism, um, and of course, we offer some pre-professional tracks such as pre-law. We do have a law school on campus. And then we also have some pre-health uh, programs such as pre-med and pre-dentistry and, and, and more. We are a very traditional college campus, very active campus. We're traditional in that. Obviously, you can see we're Division I in sports. We're part of the Big Sky Conference. We have many clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. And... Um, we're, we're actually known for uh, our, our, our outdoor recreational activities at the U of I. I mean, we're surrounded by, what, five uh, ski resorts uh, that, that take maybe three and a half hours to get to uh, the furthest one, okay? Um, but anything, to, anything that has to do with hiking, camping, uh, white water rafting, mountain biking, uh, we're definitely going to be a great school for that. Our rec center does a great job at putting on events for our students. We were even ranked in one of the outdoor magazines uh, as, as in the top, uh, as one of the best schools in the top 25 uh, to uh, offer outdoor recreational uh, activities for our students. We do, um, oh, before I get to that slide, we do require students to live on campus their first year, uh, but students can choose from uh, living in a dorm or living in Greek housing. So that's pretty cool there. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the admissions requirements. It's really simple and straightforward this year. Uh, because of the pandemic, we've lowered that admissions, admissions GPA requirement. As long as you have a 2.6 unweighted GPA and uh, you've taken your most, I believe most students on this presentation are, are, are here in California, but if you've taken the A through G course requirements here in California, you're gonna be automatically admitted, okay? And even though that says any test score, we are actually test optional this year. So as long as you're a 2.6 unweighted or higher, you don't have to submit any tests. If you are below a 2.6, we will ask for test uh, results, okay? So be prepared to submit those. Uh, we did average a 3.54 for admitted students this year though. So we were still very competitive. And yes, we are a WUI school. And the way you get our WUI is basically if you are admitted, you automatically get it. Just keep that in mind. You can see there's a $16,000 difference uh, between our normal out-of-state tuition and fees and our WUI tuition and fees. And this, this number here in the middle includes room and board, okay? And we are accepting applications right now. We are rolling admissions, so we're always admitting students and we're always accepting applications. You can do it on the Common app or you can do it on our website. Either way, uh, go ahead and submit that application with your $60 app fee and your, send your transcripts, uh, email those transcripts to us, and um, that'll be a complete application. I want to thank you for your time and um, go ahead and pass it on to our next presenter. Thank you all very much. Thank you so much. And a reminder to our participants, you can use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here at any time. Up next, we have Montana State University. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Caleb Chambers, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Montana State University. And let me tell you a little bit more about us. So Montana State University is located in Bozeman, Montana. Um, so we're in the southwest corner of Montana. We are very proud of a lot of our outdoors opportunities around Bozeman. Um, so we have two major ski areas within an hour of campus, uh, Big Sky and Bridger Bowl. Bridger is like 20 minutes from campus. We're about 90 miles north of Yellowstone National Park, as well as pretty much anything you want to do outside that doesn't require the ocean, you can do in Bozeman. We have 80 miles of hiking trails, uh, great rock climbing spots, camping, um, snowshoeing. We're also nicknamed Trout U uh, because we have three blue ribbon fly fishing rivers right around Bozeman. Um, so it's a great place if you're really into outdoor recreation. Also, Bozeman is a town of about 60,000 people. So we've kind of got that perfect balance um, between big town, small town, we have all the big box stores, but we also have a very community centered um, historic downtown district. So 
the town overall is a really nice balance between kind of those big and small feels. More specifically about the university, so um, MSU is the largest university in the state of Montana. We have 16,841 students total, it's about a little under 14,700 of those being undergraduate students. Um, so we're more of a mid-sized university nationally. We also have about a 50-50 split between in-state and out-of-state students. So there's that nice balance of getting to meet you know, Montanans and that local history, as well as meeting people from all over the country, as well as from 60 other different countries. Um, and similar to how Bozeman sort of has that nice balance between a small town, big town feel, we have the same feel at the university. You have a lot of the opportunities that you get at a larger university with the feel of a smaller university. We have an 18 to one student to faculty ratio, as well as our average class size is about 30 students. So there's that really good balance there. Also, um, we have over 300 different clubs on campus, which really go all across the board from like major specific clubs, to outdoor activities, uh, tabletop games. Um, and it only takes 10 signatures to make a new club. So the university really supports students um, in gathering other students to participate in whatever activity you're passionate about. Also, we are a division one athletic school and all students get free tickets to all of our athletic events, which is a great thing to do with your classmates or go to meet people at the games. Um, they're a lot of fun. Um, to talk a little bit more about our academics at MSU, first thing I wanna mention is the research we do. So we are an R1 research institution, which means we're in the top category of research schools in the country. Um, and we require every student, regardless of major to do research. So 100% of undergraduate students do research um, while pursuing their bachelor's degree at MSU, which is a really great opportunity for you to get that hands-on learning and really um, get some like career um, and professional experience as well as your academic experience. We also are nationally recognized with our honors college um, and we produce a ton of Goldwater scholars every year, um, which is for the sciences and engineering. Uh, in terms of what you can study at MSU, we have over 250 different academic programs. So we have a ton of variety. Here I have all of our colleges. Um, the largest two are College of Letters and Science, as well as the College of Engineering. We also have the only School of Architecture in the state of Montana. Um, so there's really a lot of different things you can study at MSU. In order to apply to MSU, so we are on a rolling admissions basis, so we have no hard deadlines. Our application is super easy. It takes an average of 20 minutes. We don't require any essays or letters of recommendation. Um, we are also now test score optional for admission and for scholarships. So if you've taken the ACT or SAT, go ahead and submit your scores for math and writing placement, but we don't require them at all otherwise. It usually takes us about two to three weeks to get back to students um, with an admissions decision. Also, we're a non-binding school, so you can apply to MSU, you can apply for scholarships, you can apply for housing, um, you can follow any of those steps, and at no point are you then bound to MSU. The only thing that ties you to us is paying your first tuition bill. So if you're still kind of exploring colleges, we want to let you know that we're not trying to add any pressure to that experience, and feel free to explore MSU without feeling like you have to commit to us. Another thing I want to talk about is our scholarships. So we do participate in the WUI program. Um, it does require an application, but the only thing we require for the application is that you live in one of the WUI states. Um, that application for this upcoming fall just opened this week. Uh, you do have to be admitted to MSU though first in order to apply. We also have uh, merit-based scholarships just based on your GPA. So that's called the Achievement Award. So you can get anywhere from two to $10,000 a year for up to four years um, automatically given to you. You don't have to apply just based off of the GPA report in your application. Um, and we have several other scholarships at MSU that are really worth checking out. So if you want to go to montana.edu slash scholarships in order to look at those, please do. So you've applied to MSU, you've applied for scholarships. The last steps in order to attend MSU is to fill out a housing application. Uh, we have 12 different residence halls on campus to choose from. If you go to montana.edu slash housing, you can do some virtual tours of them. Um, the next is in the spring, sign up for our freshman orientation. We have three sessions in the summer and one in the fall, um, and that is required for all first year students. And once you graduate high school, send us your official high school transcript. And if you do take the standardized test, then send us our, your scores if you'd like to. Thank you so much for your time. Um, here's our website if you would like to come visit us. And also there's my email, which I will add into the chat in a little bit. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you very much.
Thank you. And a reminder to our participants to use that Q&A function to ask questions of our schools here during the presentations. Up next, we have University of Montana Western. Hi, everyone. My name is Chrissy Stokes with the University of Montana Western. So Montana Western is a small public institution located in Dillon, Montana. Dillon, uh, for those of you who do not know, is in the southwestern corner of the state. Um, we are about 60 miles from the southern Idaho border. It's absolutely beautiful, completely surrounded by mountains. Um, so we're just minutes away from outdoor activities like hiking, biking, hunting, fishing, skiing, and snowboarding. Um, what sets Montana Western apart from other institutions is how we run our classes on campus. So Montana Western is the only four-year public institution in the nation that runs on a block schedule called Experience One, and this is how that process works. So our students take four classes each semester, but they actually take each class one at a time. So they are only in one class for three and a half weeks or 18 school days, and they only have to go to class for three hours a day. At the end of their course, students take a final, then they get a four day weekend before they start a brand new class. All of our classes are four credits a piece, so our students are able to get 16 credits each semester, which does keep them on track for graduating within four years. This program really is as simple as it sounds. Our students are focusing on just one subject and they're only working with one professor. And that the best part is you only have to take one final um, as well. So our students are actually learning from professors, um, not TAs, and uh, we do cap all classes at 25. Average class size is 15. So you really get that one-on-one -on -one time with the professor and you get to know the other students in your class really well. Uh, our students can take a morning class. Uh, they run from 8.15 to 11.15 or an afternoon class from 12.15 to 3.15. And then outside of those class times, uh, that time is really their own for whatever they might need to do, whether that is working on homework or um, having a part-time job, participating in club and athletic events, um, or even just taking a nap. They really can um, enjoy their free time. This program is also flexible. Um, so our students, in order to be considered full-time, they only have to take 12 credits each semester. So that means if something were to happen during one of those blocks, if they got sick or got hurt or something pulled them away from class, they can actually drop that class and pick it up at a later time and it won't mess with their full-time status, meaning that their financial aid or their scholarships will not be affected. Here is a list of our academic departments. Um, we also have a lot of programs within these departments and you can see a full list of those programs on our um, website, umwestern.edu. Our top five programs on campus are education, biology, business, health and human performance and equine studies. So we want our students to actually experience their education. So we are not going to have them just sitting in a classroom, listening to lectures and taking notes. They're actually gonna be doing the things that they might be doing in the real world. So um, we will get them up and out of the classroom as much as we can so that they'll gain um, quite a bit of that hands-on experience. And we don't just stick to the Dillon community either. Um, our students are able to participate in study abroad opportunities. So instead of going to another country for three and a half weeks, however, our students just go to another country or instead of going for a full semester, they go for three and a half weeks. So it fits directly into that block schedule. Um, our students go with Montana Western professors and other Montana Western students. So these programs are ran all directly through us. So our students will actually graduate with about two to three years of experience in their field of study. So that really does set them apart when they um, are going into graduate programs or out into the workforce. They can actually say, this is what I did when I was in school rather than I sat in a classroom and I read a book. Um, so now looking at our application process, this is pretty simple. Um, we are test optional this year as well. So our students do not have to send in test scores. They certainly can if they have them, but they're not required to do so. Um, if any students have questions about this, I will be sharing my contact information after. Um, and so that is what we are here for in the admissions office is to help students through this process. Here's a list of our four year requirements. Um, again, I know test scores are on here. Um, so we will, um, we won't look at those if we don't have them, obviously, but if students have questions about these, I can definitely answer those later as well. And looking at cost of attendance. So um, usually our non-resident students are paying about $16,000 a year for tuition alone, but we are also a part of the WUI scholarship. 
So the, in order to qualify for the WUI, we just ask our students to have a 3.0 cumulative high school GPA or higher. If students meet that, tuition will actually drop from $16,000 a year down to less than $7,000 a year. Um, so looking at tuition fees and room and board for a WUI student, it's about $15,500 each year. We do have additional scholarships that students can stack on top of the WUI. Um, that application actually just opened up yesterday on November 1st. And our deadline for that application is January 15th. Students just have to fill out one online scholarship application by that deadline to be entered into all of our scholarships. So the WUI scholarship is automatically granted so students don't even have to apply for that. And then any students looking for scholarships through athletics, that's all gonna come through the coaches. We are welcoming students on campus for visits. So if they um, actually wanna make the trip to Dillon, we would definitely host them. Um, but then we also know that sometimes that doesn't work for you. So we are available for virtual visits as well. We are going to be hosting a campus preview day, which is called X Day. That's gonna be Friday, March 18th. And we will be sharing more information about that as we get a little bit closer to the date, um, but that's something to look out for. This is my contact information. So if anyone has any questions, I will be sharing this in the chat and I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of our schools here today. We have some time for some Q&A. So I'll invite everyone um, back on screen and we will go ahead and do a little bit of Q&A. All right, our first question for the evening is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? You can share your nuggets of wisdom for our participants here today. Um, first, we'll start with Embry Riddle and we'll go in the same order. The best advice I could give in the college search process is obviously kind of just starting off and doing research and on schools you're interested in with your specific degree programs or career interests. But the biggest thing I'd always say is trying to get out and visit those schools if you can in person. Uh, we all offer virtual tours most of the time, especially after COVID. Um, but if you can really do an in-person visit and see uh, what we have to offer on campus in person and see if that's a place you want to spend four years of your life, I'd say that's probably the best advice I could take from my experiences. Something that I would say is to be open. Um, I found Boise State super randomly at a college fair when I was a junior in high school, and I never thought I would have ended up in Idaho for school. So um, if, you know, whatever school you're looking at, if it's in state or out of state, if it's close to home or 40, 50 miles away from home or 800, just be open because you'll never know what gem of the university that's perfect out there for you um, if you are close minded. So. I think the uh, best advice I can give is really uh, be organized through the process, um, especially if you're applying to multiple schools. Um, you know, I know some students are applying to five, 10 schools. So, you know, use a checklist, um, you know, and use, use your spreadsheets, you know, do what, use whatever that comes natural to you to be organized. Uh, my advice would be like, don't be afraid to utilize us as resources. Um, like we're not salespeople. It's not, we're not here trying to like twist you into our school, like sign the dotted line and come here. Like our jobs really is to tell you about our, like is to help you maybe come to our school because we love our schools and we're passionate about it. But we're also passionate about helping you through this process and finding the best school for you. And if like MSU isn't the school for you, like, but you have something in mind of like, I'm looking for this school. Like I'm more than willing to help you like figure out colleges in general. Like we're not some like, you know, Wizard of Oz behind the glass mirror type deal. So please like contact us, ask us questions um, and don't be afraid to like ask anything because we recognize that this is your first time going to college for a lot of you. So we're here to help. So please utilize us. My biggest piece of advice is to uh, make sure you're going to the school that you want to go to. Um, you don't have to listen to your best friend, brother, sister, mom, or dad. Um, they can definitely weigh in on the process, but um, they shouldn't be making the end all be all um, decision. That should be definitely up to you um, because it is, it is a long time that you're gonna be going to school. I mean, um, one, two, four years, that could be your home for that next amount of time. So you really have to make sure it's the right place for you and not just for somebody else. 
Thank you so much, everyone. That's all really great advice. Um, I definitely like to echo what Caleb was saying is reach out to these friendly individuals on your screen. They're, they're here to help. Look, all smiling faces. They're here to help. So definitely reach out. Um, we have time for some more questions. So our next question um, for the evening is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? So it can be a fun fact or just something, you know, that you think sets your school apart. What do you want our uh, participants to leave remembering about your school? We'll go in the same order. I'd say one, I guess one thing to remember about our school is, um, is just that I guess we're kind of an aviation school. It's not a very common thing. Uh, your classroom will be an airplane. You'll be flying um, throughout the school week and uh, getting to see different states. Uh, we fly from Arizona, anywhere from Utah, New Mexico, California, Nevada, uh, Colorado. Uh, so we fly to all the surrounding states and that's your class period essentially. So it's kind of a cool little fact about us. Something that you can take away um, from Boise State is uh, that we are one of the top 50 public schools for innovation. So if you like to think outside of the box, if you want to um, collaborate with your professors directly, um, that's something that you can do here. Um, I think uh, the, the one thing that I'd say remember about the U of I is, um, you know, we're, we're a public university, but we're small. And, but even though we're small in population, we, we have the resources of a large public university when it comes to research dollars and things of that nature. So um, yeah, that's what I would say. I think mine would be, um, or really big into balance, I guess. Like you get that small school community with um, amazing research opportunities. We like to balance like really amazing academics with awesome recreation, kind of big, school, small school balance. So like you really can kind of get the best of both worlds at MSU. For Montana Western, um, one thing I want students to remember is that everyone is there to help you succeed. So um, having those small class sizes, you get to know your professors really well. They get to know you as a student and as a person, which is really nice. Um, and that goes for professors, for staff members, for everybody on our campus. So um, everyone is there for your best interest and will help you out um, every step of the way. Fantastic, thank you so much. I think we have time for one more question here. So our last question for the evening is, what is one myth you'd like to debunk on the college admissions process? Right. I think kind of Caleb kind of touched on this, but um, we're not here to judge you as missions counselors. We're here to kind of help you and facilitate you in your search. We're here to give you information. So we're not big, scary people. Um, <laughs> we're just there to kind of give you the best information and for you to take away from that what you need to and make your decision for your college process. A myth I'd like to debunk is that you are just a number at a big state school or you'll never get to know your professors um, if, you're, if you have large class sizes. I think as you navigate the college admissions process, you'll see pros and cons at all of these different institutions in, re in regards to size, um, but uh, the size of a classroom doesn't necessarily mean you cannot connect with the professor. I know um, from experience, uh, personally and professionally at a large state school, I made so many connections with faculty um, and staff at the university level. Um, so I think that's one that I'd like to share. <laughs> I think one myth I'd like to debunk, um, I don't hear it as much today as I did um, when I was in admissions a while ago, but um, you know, a lot of students think that their freshman year grades don't count or their, you know, only their sophomore and junior year grades are the most important. But every school I've ever worked at, we look at all four years. And so um, work hard every year. So that's it. I mean, I guess what I wanted to debunk sort of ties into my advice, but I would debunk that you're expected to know everything. Um, I think that at least when I was applying to colleges, I felt like I had to figure out like how to apply, where all the scholarships were, how to apply for housing, all, all these things by myself. Um, and that's not at all the case. Like, like I say, we recognize that this is a first time experience for a lot of you. And so um, rely on your student counselors or, you know, your parents or like the people around you that can kind of guide you. Um, please utilize 
us and whoever else you can just because you know we don't expect you to figure it all out on your own so it's okay if you don't quite know what you're doing yet um so to kind of piggyback on what caleb was saying i would also like um to tell students that it is okay if you do not know what you want to go into um that is one of the toughest questions that we ask 16 through 18 year olds is what do you want to do for the rest of your life it is probably one of the most daunting questions out there. Um, it is not the end of the world if students have to change their major. Um, I promise you more students will change their major than they won't. Um, so we are here to help again um, with that process. And um, it, is not, it is not going to mean that you're gonna add on you know, five more years to your college experience. We are here to help you get it done in as quick manner as possible, but actually in the program that you want. Thank you so much. That's all um, fantastic advice. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with all of our participants today. And thank you participants for joining us and listening um, to all of our institutions here tonight. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey. So we'd really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions after this. You'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all of the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. That's strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. Thank you so much. Have a great evening.